So some persons say this particular AI model is more powerful than Google. Some say it is uh, more powerful than ChatGPT. Uh, we are not interested with that war. We are interested with can it help our work as researchers, as uh, academic researchers? What can it do for us? What are the advantages it has over a, other um, AI models? That is what I want to show you in this video, how to use perplexity AI for supercharging your research work. Now, from what we have on the interface, it looks so much like some of the AI models you have used before. But there are some important parts, some very beautiful parts of this AI that makes it uniquely different from every other AI model you have used before now. What are some of these things? Now, I'll just take you through an overview of this interface. This is where you log on to once you sign up to Perplexity um, AI. Some of the things it has here, it's the home. This is the home part of it. And on the home part of it, where you put in your prompt, you can decide the nature of depth, the depth of the insight you want out of your prompt. You can want to leave it at auto, where it chooses what to uh, reply you, or you can take it to a pro, where it gives you a pro answer with more sources, or you can use its reasoning path, where it solves very extraneous uh, problems, mathematical problems, complex scientific computation, and give you answers very fast. You can also use the deep reasoning. This is the new addition to this model that allows you to um, have a deep reasoning, a deep uh, understanding, a, deep, a deeper understanding of your problem and give you very specific answer. Now, the Plessity AI is also just beyond asking questions, getting to find um, research gaps and all of that. It has some other beautiful part. It has spaces. Now, it's in the spaces option, you are allowed to upload your PDF document Say you have a research work you want to understand better. This is where you get to upload that work and you begin to discuss with that PDF document to get further insight. It also has uh, the ability to convert complex materials to um, very simple short notes that you can use for your presentation. You can convert papers to very simple FAQs and beyond that also, it has the part where you can collaborate with others. That is, you can create a space, put in some of the literature work it helps you create, share it with others, and others can also look into what you've done, comment, expand, and of course, it enhances collaboration. Of course, it also allows you to build your own library. So if you have um, a number of documents you want to uh, be all, uh, always referred to, you can build your library right inside Perplexity AI. But let's take it one step at a time to see what this model can do for us one step at a time. The first thing it can do for us is to help us with literature review. Yes, this model can search the internet, can search the web space, can search research databases to get you plenty of papers that are related to your particular search. Now, to use that path of this AI model, there are some few things you need to set up. You need to go to the this tab and set it to deep reasoning. You need to get to this tab and set it to academic so that it's not going to be giving you generalized answers. It's going to be giving you answers from previous papers that are available on research databases so when you're done with that you can now put your prompt say this is your prompt um you want to find answers for this particular paper research topic you have in mind and um you just put that topic there and put it in parentheses you may want to add a, a comment a prompt or you can just click on that and it will find you papers that are related to that to this topic so just hit on 
this path and it should go out there, take a deep seek, take a deep research, take um, a deep reasoning. And when it is done, it would notify you of very important things around your topic. Now, what's it going to do for you? One, it's going to search the internet, going to search the research space, going to search research databases. And when it is done, it would give you a summary of papers that have discussed similar things. And it's going to tell you where it has sought out these things. It's going to give you um, the links to the papers. Of course, if you are going to look for uh, related literature, this is your first spot. Now, this is one of the reasons why they say it is a lot more powerful than Google Scholar. If it was Google Scholar, Google Scholar would just list out the papers for you. It will not tell you what it has found out of these papers. It will not give you a summary of the papers, but this AI model does a lot more than that. Thus far, it has assessed 59 sources, and from these sources, it has given me detailed overview of what these sources have to say about my proposed research topic. Now, this is still circling around. That means it is still digging out more. It has images for me if I want to see images. I could want to read each of the parts one after the other. Um, it is now done. It has taken through a deep dive of 59 sources. These are all the sources it has looked at. This is three of them. This is 56 of them. So if I was building a very wonderful chapter two literature review, or I am looking for related papers to conceptualize my work, to um, look at what other persons have done around this topic, what advances, what methodology they have deployed, this is that one sort answer. And so let's see what it has done for me. It has looked at this and I'd say, um, recent that, 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 uh, fundamentals of quantum dot and um, entanglement sources, and um, some papers that have done that, some papers that have done that, and um, the concept I need to look at, that if I'm going to discuss this topic, I should look at by exiting, exiting cascade mechanism, and um, it has shown that some papers have done that before, and some papers have done that. They need to look at um, the primary obstacle to generating high quality entangled footings that has been defined um, structure splitting. This phenomenon occurs when structural asymmetries in the quantum dot break the generalities of all of that, and all of that. I have papers there that have mentioned that. And so, generally, it has given me. An overview it has given me a report of what has been previously done around this work and not just has it done that for me it has told me some very recent breakthrough around this it says in march 2024 such as the university of waterloo um announced a groundbreaking breakthrough in this field bringing together two Nobel prize winners to discuss entanglement and um, quantum to advance quantum um, communication. So it's both looking at papers and all of that. And so I have more than a 10 pages document just here, which I can copy, send somewhere. I can export all of these. I can actually to rewrite these. And I am already building for myself a very beautiful of literature review and this is quite extensive quite extensive quite beautiful and um, what else can you want from an ai model now this is you just putting up your topic and it begins to do several things for you now there is a last part of this it says how do quantum dot compare to other shapes in terms of quantum 14 pair generation. What are the main challenges in achieving this? How does the use of broadband photonic enhances entangled state and all of that and all of that? So you can just go back and now ask uh, particular questions. Now you uh, I need to export this because you need this if you were building on that topic. So before you leave, you want to ensure that you have exported this either as a document 
or as um, uh, a dog. So I just click on whichever of them and immediately I have that exported a very beautiful document and I have just built my the first part of this beautiful topic. But then I can do so much more. I can rewrite. I can um, ask further more questions. I can go to spaces and I could see the images it's put together around this topic. Of course, these images are drawn from papers. It's going to give me a visualized um, position of what other persons have done around this topic from um, those who have theoretically discussed the topic to those who have done some experiment. And I can also look at the sources. These are the plenty sources it has um, explored to get me all that we have there. And so what can I do with this? These are already plenty related literature. And so people have done something extensively around this. These are my sources. This I can keep somewhere there. And this I can share. I can share these sources to other persons. I can share to Twitter. I can share to WhatsApp. And all of that is still very much available. And there is so much more this model can do for me. I can click and get to find each of the papers. Get to see what, see what each of the papers are saying particularly. And that is still a very beautiful part. But let's go back and I want to show you one more thing that this AI model can just do. So when I've previously used this, I did not ask a specific question. I just put the topic. But now I'm, I'm, ask, I'm back here and I'm asking a question. I'm saying, find and summarize five research gaps with a future trust around this topic and i, I want to again be sure that i am discussing academics and i'll be sure that i am using its um deep reasoning or deep research part of it and i want to hit on enter this time it's not going to just do a deep dive for me it's going to do a specific deep dive and when it is done with that deep dive it's going to give me an overview of five possible research gaps on this topic that are of a future trust and so this time i have asked a specific question so first you can just put your topic and it would give you a report a general report of what has been done in that topic then you could also ask specific questions and it would give you very specific answers I will look through or look into a number of research papers. And so it's digging 43 sources thus far. And it has found that many persons have discussed this, and has there is um, plenty of persons have used quantum dot, but most persons have not used um, elliptical quantum dot research gap. And so it's going to still dig further. It has looked at 65 sources thus far. It is still getting into more sources. And when it is done, it will find me those five things, those five research gaps that are around this topic with a future perspective. So this model is now done. And I have five beautiful research gaps. And it's not just mentioning the gaps for me. It is explaining the gaps. So it's saying, one, that there is a gap on collection efficiency and directional emission challenges. And it explains the gap and tells me how I can fill that gap. That is fine structure splitting and decurrence in uh, mit uh, mitigation. And it tells me how I can fill that. And this can just be very beautiful. Five gaps carefully explained. And don't forget that at each point, you can export them out, which is a beautiful a beautiful one exporting what you found out so that you can uh, work on it further and what further can this do this is such a beautiful one so if you're going to use this tool very well there are two things to do is that you just put your topics and it gives you a general overview or you um, put in your topic and ask a specific question and it would search this as such 101 sources to get me 
five possible research gap and from this research gap of course i can go to fine tune my topics better and this has just enhanced research